Install the mechanism. Check that the two tapped M10 holes in the top of the mechanism can be seen through the clearance holes in the bearing plate. The roller on the upper part of the changeover selector must fit into the slot in the position selector. Tighten the four M8 screws in the corners of the bearing plate. Change the cover O-ring. Place it in the groove. When the tap changer is clean and dry, you can fill it with approved oil, which must be filtered as you fill. Fill to the level of the spring package in the mechanism. Before installing the cover, check the position of the driving disc. It must be positioned like this. Lower the cover straight down towards the flange, lining up the horizontal shaft at the same time. Check that the guide pin in the flange fits into the corresponding hole in the cover. Check that the key in the vertical shaft of the bevel gear is pointing towards the earthing symbol on the flange. If not, adjust the position by turning the outer shaft of the bevel gear. Do not change the position until the shaft system is completely installed. See the maintenance guide for details. Check that the numbers in the indication window correspond to the maintenance position and that the motor drive mechanism indicates the same position. Renew O-rings and restore the connections on the cover to the flanges of the conservator pipes and the pressure relay. Leave the valve on the pipe to the conservator open. The venting screw in the cover must be closed. Fill the tap changer to a suitable level through the conservator. Use the venting screw in the cover to let air escape. With this method, a suitable air cushion is formed automatically under the cover. When you've installed the pressure relay, check it as follows. Connect pumping equipment which can generate pressure. Set the testing valve to the test position as described in the instructions for the valve. Increase the pressure until the pressure relay trips. Note the pressure gauge reading and check it against the pressure stated in the information plate. When you reduce the pressure, the alarm signal should stop. After the test, turn the handle to the operating position and fit the cover over the testing valve. Do not forget to check and deal with alarms tripped in monitoring equipment at the station or at other control locations. The test must be done in consultation with personnel in charge of operations. Open the covers of the bevel gears. Check the lubrication. Lubricate couplings in the horizontal and vertical shafts. Finally, we'd like to show you how to replace contacts. Remove the transition resistors by unscrewing two screws at the front edge and four screws at the back.
remove resistance contact units one and three by removing their four screws. Note the angle of the resistance contact rollers. Moving main contact unit two is removed by unscrewing its two screws. The new main contact unit and the resistance contact units are then installed. Start with the main contact. Use a locating tool to ensure that the units with the resistance contacts are correctly positioned. Refer to Appendix 6 of the Maintenance Guide to see what's correct for your unit. Tighten all screws referring to the guideline set out in the Maintenance Guide. Check that the element is working. Check that the drive belt tension is sufficient. A load of 10 newtons should press the belt in 5 millimeters. Disconnect one of the phase wires and check the operating time of the motor protection by doing a raise or lower operation. The motor protection should trip within 60 seconds. If there is a time relay, disconnect it. Check the rating plate of the motor. This shows the value to which the motor protection must be set. Set the motor drive mechanism to the lowest position, one. If there is a time relay, disconnect it. Block the drive mechanically with a bar about one meter long. Take up any slack with the crank. Crank in the raise direction. Give an increase command. The motor starts to drive. The protection must trip within 60 seconds. Use a dry cloth to remove dust and dirt from the contact plates and arms. Here we've taken out the parts to make it easier for you to see. Check contact operation with the moving arm in all positions. Check and adjust the moving contacts in the auxiliary contact units of motor drive mechanism. The clearance between the nut and contact arm of the moving contacts must be 0.4 to 1.2 millimeters in all positions. This is how to adjust these with the nuts on the contact.
check the counter by doing increase, decrease switching operations. Wipe all grease off the disc brake. Crank 25 turns. When wiping is complete, the position indicator must be at position or another middle position. Test the brake. This is where the excess energy of the motor and gears must be absorbed. The red mark on the cam disc must stop not more than plus or minus 25 degrees from the red mark between the adjusting nuts. The braking force can be adjusted by tightening the springs in the brake. Crank the motor drive mechanism until the brake is fully open. In this position, the springs must not be fully compressed. If the brake still does not work, there is probably oil or grease on the brake pads. For cleaning, see section 312.7 of the maintenance guide. Check that the operating contact brake prevents the link system on the operating contact shaft from swinging past its normal position when the operating arm roller comes free of the cam disc. In the final stage of a switching operation, the contacts for switching in the opposite direction must not move when the red position arm swings back to the normal position. Excessive swinging is prevented by clamping the brake harder. When adjusting the brake, take care not to over tighten it. If you do, the drive mechanism only works in one direction. Check that the position indicator goes to the middle position after completion of an operation. To begin with, we wish to point out that you should avoid using too much lubricant. You can begin with the bearings of the brake pads and links. Some parts are so far in that we've taken them out for filming so that you can see exactly where to lubricate. Lubricate with all parts assembled. Sparingly lubricate the spur gear and Geneva wheel with the end position stop, as well as the cam discs and the cam bar using the same lubricant as for the drive shaft system. When lubricating, take care to prevent lubricant getting onto the brake disc and brake pads. Carefully clean up all excess lubricant. Operate the tap changer first manually to any position, then electrically between the end positions. Check the end position stops by operating the tap changer to each end position. If an attempt is made to perform an electrical operation past the end position, it must not be possible to start the motor. Check the mechanical end position stop by attempting to crank past the end stop. After one or two turns of the crank, you should reach a mechanical stop. Crank back to the end position. Do the same in the other direction. Check that everything has been correctly done and make a written record of the work, counter reading and comments. Return the on-load tap changer to the same position as it was in before you started. Arrange for the operational personnel to remove earthing and shorting before putting the tap change into service. Check that the element is working.
Check that the drive belt tension is sufficient. A load of six newtons should press the belt in two millimeters. Lock the mechanism with the disc brake when the brake arm roller is in the slot in the cam disc. If there is a time relay, disconnect it. Clamp the disc brake together with welding tongs. When you try to operate the tap changer, the motor protection should trip within 60 seconds. Check the operation of the contacts. Check the operation of the contacts in all positions with both lower and raise switching operations. You cannot adjust the contacts. If the position sensor needs to be replaced, refer to the maintenance guide. Check the counter by doing increase, decrease switching operations. Operate the motor drive mechanism and check that the cam of the cam disc stops within plus minus two millimeters from the center of the counter arm. If it does not, you can adjust the brake force with the adjusting screw at the bottom end of the brake. Slacken the lock nut. When the screw is tightened, the motor drive mechanism stops earlier. When the screw is loosened, it stops later. After adjustment, tighten the lock nut. Under normal working conditions, this unit does not require lubrication. If lubrication is needed, you can lubricate the bevel gear of the crank the Geneva wheels, and the bevel gear of the position indicator. Check that everything has been